Hello, my friends. Andy Kennedy here with Inner Self Lightworks, coming to you today with this episode of Merlin Speaks to talk about a big word, piezoelectricity. And we just recently watched a, um, a really awesome movie called Radioactive about uh, Marie Curie. And it reminded me, uh, it sparked a conversation, I should say, that I had with Merlin over the last few days about how crystals are formed. And uh, for those of you that know me, know that Merlin is my gatekeeper spirit guide and that we talk a lot about crystals and herbs and um, alchemy on that level. So crystals, um, especially quartz crystal, has the property of piezoelectricity. And that, that, so crystals are formed by pressure and heat and um, there's a difference between minerals and rocks. So um, some rocks, some igneous rocks, which means they're formed by mostly heat, by magma, by melting, by movement. Um, for example, uh, obsidian, if you think of a volcano erupting and then that magma, then cooling and, um, and you know, over years, if you will, uh, petrifying, like petrified wood, then it becomes very um, glass-like and it turns into obsidian. Uh, back to crystal, so quartz crystal has a lot of properties to it. Um, it's a very hard crystal. It's not as hard as diamond, obviously. Diamond is our hardest mineral and it is, um, it is the mineral, has the mineral hardness of 10. Crystal is more like seven. Um, in between that, for instance, ruby, sapphire, emerald, those are all eight nines. They're very hard minerals as well, but they're minerals too. Um, and all of these uh, have that tendency of piezoelectricity. And that effect um, then generates and creates and holds energy within it. And so if you think about what happens when someone who is very in tune and intuitive pressure holds the crystal and applies pressure into the crystal. So a harder crystal like this, you know, you, you apply pressure to it and you can feel that energy generating up your arm. You know, crystals are used in all sorts of, of technological applications if you will, um, lasers and watches and um, uh, record players and, and, you know, conducting sound, right? All of these crystals, they're magic for us because they've, they, you know, we figured out how to use their inherent energy. And so that's a word I wanted to come to you today to, to, to share uh, this piezoelectricity, you know, which means obviously, you know, if we, we, we squeeze or press together, then we get sort of that form of electric energy. Okay. So, um, you know, and whether crystals conduct energy, hold energy, transmute energy, you know, it's all relation to partially the energy that they can conduct themselves by their own hardness and their own innate way that they have been made in the earth's crust and structure. Um, but what I love about quartz is, you know, it is the master healer. It is, um, and I'll show you this. This is a tabby quartz. Uh, tabbies are good for for conducting knowledge and um, and putting knowledge together. And so tabular is where tabby quartz comes from because it is a tabular structure. So it looks, you know, it's typically flat. Um, there are structures growing together and uh, they are typically dual pointed. So you can see that some of these are um, pointed at both ends. Um, and again, a flat, flat like tabular in structure. So this is my teacher quartz. It's uh, it's a quartz that I use for channeling energy from Merlin and from source energy so that I can have a better clarity around whatever the topic is that I'm teaching on. So it's typically sitting in my lap when I'm teaching something. And um, when I talk about piezoelectricity, um, the electric charge is something, like I said, that is um, accumulated if you will, even conducted, if you will. So it accumulates in solid minerals, such as crystals, some ceramics, biological matter, such as bone and DNA as well. Um, and 
you know, it is in response to mechanical stress. So the word piezoelectricity, you know, really means electrically resulting from pressure and latent heat. Of course, that's how crystals are made, right? Um, and so what I love, I'm going to pull up this, this book that I've got. It's this tiny little book on rocks and minerals. And it's one of my, I mean, let me also pull out this book. This is the giant Bible that us crystal healers use for, um, for, I, I mean, obviously, right? I'm not going to memorize all of these definitions about crystals, right? So this has become my Bible. It's by Melody. She's one of my teachers, longtime teachers. I've taken several workshops with Melody. Um, I do have um, a certificate in crystal healing uh, from Melody's um, uh, teachers. And my teacher actually is in Boulder. So she's been trained by Melody, but I've taken workshops with Melody as well. She actually does reside here in Colorado. Sometimes, um, she's in Arizona as well because she's got, um, a couple of mines there for, for quartz crystal itself. But, um, you know, crystal quartz crystal is really, it's the, it's kind of the mothership, if you will, of crystal healing. It's a master clearer, charger, energetic center, um, it's really, it's one of those crystals that's good for everything. Um, but the important property of quartz is that piezoelectricity, which gives its many uses um, and contributions. So, you know, crystals are one of the most common mineral collections on earth. Um, they typically do have six sides to them um, and a hardness on most scale of a hardness of seven. So um, it's definitely one of the more hard wearing uh, gemstones that we have. Its color is typically clear, but quartz is actually also, um, I don't have an amethyst here at my ready, but I do have a citrine. Um, so quartz is can come in clear, it can come in yellow, and it can come in purple. When it's yellow, it's called citrine. And when it's purple, it's called amethyst. And they have a little bit of a different properties to them as well, of course. Um, but um, you know, that is purple quartz, for instance, uh, amethyst and, um, citrine, like I said, is yellow. Um, now quartz is also, um, you know, it's, it's non-crystalline form is chalcedony and chalcedony is, uh, agates and jaspers and carnelians, um, and, uh, other like opal, flint, other minerals, um, develop in the cracks. And so when you see quartz, um, to have this glistening center to it, um, a lot of the time we crack open a geode, which is an agate, um, and you see that crystalline center, those little crystals are that um, chalcedony-like, um, uh, beautiful agatized centers. Um, and so, you know, all of these in this family of quartz, if you will, um, has a lot of that same clearing type energy. Clearing meaning letting go of negative energy, of negative um, thoughts, negative patterns, um, all of that. And, you know, when you come back to that energy of piezoelectricity, right, that electrical charge, that's what's helping us let go of those negative patterns, right? Because it it connects with us on a subatomic level and helps us move that energy away from us. So in simple terms, you know, we are obviously energy. We are made up of all these tiny little atoms and so is quartz. And that's why humans connect so well to quartz crystals um, and gemstones and minerals because we are mineral in our nature as well. So just a brief short little 10 minute video on piezoelectricity. If you want to go look that up and learn a little bit more about that, um, that word is spelled P-I-E-Z-O and then electricity. Um, and so yeah, crystals, uh, they have that inherent electricity to them and that's why they are an ally for us to use in healing and clearing and, um, and helping our, our whole body, mind, body, and spirit come back into balance. So that's our little tidbit from Merlin today.